Good day. Welcome back to episode six on the counting principle. In this episode, we're going to look at probabilities. We use the counting principle to calculate probability. We then to look at an example to illustrate this. Now, it is very important to take note whenever they ask you to find a probability that you need to remember that you always need to divide by the sample space. But let's go to an example and let's discuss it and you see how we use the counting principle to calculate probability. In this problem, they say to us that there are four different science books and five different mathematics books. So a total of nine books, four of them science, five of them mathematics. Now, you already may expect that they're going to ask us to do a grouping, which is quite possible. But very important to notice that when we are dealing with books, clothes, or people, they can't repeat. These books are different, so they cannot repeat. So what they say is, we need to arrange these books on a bookshelf. How will we do it? And that's what they say to us in the next one. They say, how many ways can, can these books be arranged on the bookshelf? if there are no restrictions. So they, they don't want us to group them. They don't want any specific one in any position. They say any way we can arrange them, no restriction, we arrange them on a bookshelf. So what we need to do is we need to draw our little lines and we're going to draw nine of them to represent the nine books. Remember, we're not going to do any grouping whatsoever. We, the books may be mixed on the bookshelf. They don't, there's not a specific order because they say no restriction. That's the important thing. So how many ways can we do it? First position, any one of the nine books can be in position one. Then eight, because they can't repeat. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And when we multiply, you will remember from our previous um, lessons that this will give us nine factorial. Much easier to work with nine factorial because it's a lot of numbers to multiply and it's easy to make a mistake. When you calculate this on your calculator, your answer hopefully will be the same as mine and it is 362880. And that is for 9 factorial. Remember, in this one, they did not ask us for a probability yet. They only ask us how many ways can we arrange these books when there are no restrictions. Let's look at B. In this part of the question, remember, it's still on the, the four science books and the five different mathematics books. They want us to arrange them randomly. And now they say, what is the probability? Now, don't get a fright with this question because we first need to determine what probability they want. And now you most probably realize what will happen. To find a probability, we're going to get a restriction. So you will remember that when we did probabilities, we said the probability of any event is the n of that event over the n of s, which is the sample space. Now, I always suggest that before you even look at what the restriction is, you hopefully agree with me that the sample space is 9 factorial. That is always the part where there are no restrictions. That is the total number of ways. 
Remember, we, um, we now want to use the counting principle to do a probability. What is the probability that we want? And that probability will be a restriction. So the restriction will be the numerator. The denominator will be always no restriction. So what do they want from us? What probability do they want us to calculate? They say that the first book will be a science book and the last book a mathematics book. And you hopefully now you can hear what we discussed before. They restrict the first position as well as the last position. Now, on the first position, the first one must be a science book. And there are four science books. So that means the first position, any one of four. Remember, not four factorial, only four because it's only one position. Multiply by the last position must be a mathematics book. So it's any one of the five. Now, for all the spaces in between the first and the last, remember there's a total of nine. First position, a science book, four possibilities. Last position, maths, five possibilities. Now we need to arrange all the positions in between first and last. And you will agree there are seven positions. And there we don't care which one is maths, which one is science. So you will hopefully agree with me that will be seven factorial. Now, so this is your numerator, four times five times seven factorial, similar to the discussions of before. Now, what we add to this is that we've got the denominator, which is our sample space, and that is nine factorial. Now, you can take your calculator, put this, use a fraction button, and work it out. You may give the answer in a decimal form or a fraction form. Something quite easy to do this, or easy way to look at it, is 4 times 5 is 20, times by 7 factorial. The 9 factorial you can write as 9 times 8 times 7 factorial. Remember, that's the meaning of factorial. This will cancel because it's multiplication. So you will get 20 over 9 times 8 is 72. And of course, this is easy to simplify because five, uh, 4 goes into 20 uh, 5 times and 4 goes into 72 18 times. So that is your probability, 5 over 18. That is the probability that the first book will be science and the last book will be mathematics. Let's look now at C. Please remember we have four different science books, five different mathematics books, a total of nine. No restriction, it's nine factorial ways to do it. Now in the second one, the B part, they restricted positions. So in the C part, you can already expect them to give us a grouping. Let's read. They say, if the books are arranged randomly, what is the probability? So they want probability again. I always suggest that when you see they want probability, please write down your formula for probability. The probability of any event is the how many in that event over how many in the sample space. You hopefully now is happy that I say sample space is 9 factorial because that is no restrictions. Always that is your sample space. Now, for the numerator, because we are going to calculate a probability, we need to know what is the restriction they give us. They say all the science books together and all the maths books together. So you hear that there are two groups here, similar to what we did before. So if I take the one group of the science books, there are four of them, to arrange that group is four factorial, multiply by, 
Now we arrange the maths books because they that is also in a group because they they've got two groups here. So we arrange the maths book. So that is five factorial. Remember, it's on a bookshelf. So that is the science books. Multiply how many ways we can arrange the maths books. But remember what we said before. We can switch them around. Science first, math second, or math first, science second. So that means we need to multiply by two. So that will be our numerator. Four factorial times five factorial times two. Of course, you can use your calculator again and use the fraction button, put the numerator in, the denominator, you can write the answer as a decimal or as a fraction, and your answer will be 1 over 63. So, when you look at these six episodes on the counting principle, you will now understand that we spoke about repetition or no repetition. We spoke about restrictions of positions and or groupings and now in this session we spoke about probability now we need to be able to do all of this to cope with the probability questions so the denominator always the sample space no restriction the numerator will be one of the restrictions thank you so much